Today we're surf fishing near Cabo San Lucas and you'll be amazed at the huge variety of fish that we catch. Hawkfish, jack, and of course the amazing rooster fish and all on top water. Stay tuned for an exciting adventure on Fish the Baja. It's a rooster! Wow! Fish the Baja, presented by Onos. Hi, I'm Dave Maynard. Welcome to Fish the Baja. Today we're in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, fishing for rooster fish. And this is a fish I've been wanting to catch for 20 years, one of this size. And I get to do it with a good friend of mine, Wes Bro, surf fishing near Cabo San Lucas. Stay tuned. First time I came down to Cabo San Lucas, the highway was two lane and parts of it were washed out and dirty. Um, now it's a nice four lane road. It's much faster from the airport, so getting here is a lot easier than it used to be. It seems like I'm always going to the ends of the earth to go fishing, and Baja is no different. Cabo is right at the bottom of the Baja. This beach that we're on here was was wide open. The, the Solmar was the only thing around, and uh, it was just a wide open beach. And at night, Walking down the beach here, it was completely dark. You know, the key to surf fishing down here is to find bait. If you find bait, you'll find fish. If, if you don't find bait, it's gonna be a long day. You know, this morning on Playa Grande Beach, it was a, a function of finding bait. And there were two schools of bait that I was looking at, and, and it was just a function of when the predators, when the fish were gonna get to one bait of, school of bait or the other, and uh, just, watching back and forth to see which one would go off first. Anytime you see birds surf fishing in the Baja, it's a good sign. But watch out for the pelicans because they'll fly right into your line and then you've got a huge mess. Man, my finger, I cut it pretty bad on some fly line about two weeks ago, and it's healed, but this is, uh, this is pretty tough on it. Throwing a 50 pound braid, just, mm. so I got this little sticky tape that Stefan's, and it's nice, actually what works better than this, was what a guy showed me yesterday, and I haven't had a chance to get any, is a latex glove, and you just cut the fingers off and put them on, but this was really good too.
good one, actually. makes that lure, it's really nice. Good size jack, he's real thick, look at the belly. So, not a bad fish off the beach. These guys are super tough, they get a lot bigger than this too. I'm gonna get this hook out of him, get him back in the water. I think the thing that makes a fishing outstanding in Cabo San Lucas is that there's deep water so close to the shore. When you go out of the marina, immediately you're at the, the 100 fathom line at 600 feet. So that brings currents close to shore and bait fish close to shore, and of course that brings the predators right in. Oh God, it's a little one, but still nice. Little more than that last guy, but still, so great. They're all talking it too. He's like, man, I want back in the water. I can feel that with my, I got my thumb up his gill. What he's saying, it's so cool. Wow. Not a huge one for down here, but super powerful, super fun. I'm gonna use my plier. Mary doesn't like to go fishing with me unless I'm staying somewhere nice. And we are at the Playa Grande. It is fantastic. All the rooms have a great view. I've stayed in maybe a half a dozen rooms, and they're all gorgeous. And when you stay at Playa Grande, if you want to set up some fishing, there's a sport fishing desk right in the lobby. You can talk to Renee or Leo, and they'll set you up with a boat. You know, if you need something to eat, you don't have to leave the hotel. There's a real convenient shop, has ice cream, has popcorn, has some staples if you want to eat in your room. Get it right there in the hotel. They've also got a great bar, um, actually several of them. Uh, happy hour starts at three o'clock in the summertime, two o'clock in the wintertime, so just listen for the bell and it's two for one. One of the cool things I think with Playa Grande is the landscaping. It, you're, we're here in the desert and you look out of your room and it is just gorgeous. Palm trees and bougainvillea and flowers and it's just immaculately landscaped. It's just Great service, great people, great attitude. You'll love staying at Playa Grande. I was really looking forward to this day fishing with Wesley. He and I had met about a year ago and have really hit it off. We have so many values in common and, and our faith in common. And, um, you know, kind of secretly, I wanted to catch my first really big rooster with him. I was born in Los Angeles. My parents were living down here before I was born, so my mom went back to the States to have me. And then they moved back down here when I was about a month old. And. With the homeschooling, it was you had a flexible time schedule, so I could get up in the morning and go fishing. And I started fishing off the rocks. This was light tackle and bait. And then when I was about 13, um, a friend of mine, his name is Murph, took me off the beach and said, "Let's go fish for rooster fish." And I was like, "What?" From there, I kind of caught on to surf fishing and really loved doing that. And so that's been kind of my passion ever since is surf fishing. So I'm up. Even if I'm not guiding trips, I'm up out there fishing every morning, so 
know where the fish are. We went to a spot that is absolutely gorgeous, a beach that's pretty much private. There's a lot of absolutely gorgeous homes on this beach. It is so pristine. And there's this little bay that holds bait, and Wesley had been catching some fish there. Um, actually, he told me um, later on in the day, he said he had caught a nice rooster the day before with a client on a surf fishing trip, and he was hoping that wasn't the only big rooster that was there. These guys are healthy. Yeah, they are. Now they're eating so much bait. And lures. Look at how fat he is. He's just super fat. I know. And this chunky little beast. Very confident. or something. The hawk it fish. is a little hawkfish. Oh, yeah. I wanted to catch one of these. They're so pretty. This is one of the ones on my list that I wanted to catch down here. And when you're spearfishing, fishing, what you recognize when you're diving is these two white spots. Yeah, that's, that's kind of unique. That's how you, because they're going to shoot across the reef, and that's how you'll notice them. And they got probably a bit some nasty choppers in there, but beautiful. All right, I'll get them in the water. Oh, big one. Wow. <laughs> I think I might make some speech out of this guy. I think we might be able to do that. Wow, bud. That is a big Sierra. I mean, so close into the beach. I think that's, that's close to a record. Uh, this experience this day was the classic Beauty and the Beast Baja style. I catch this little beautiful hawkfish, and one of the next fish that is caught, Wes catches what would have been a world record Sierra mackerel, 15 pounds. So we had we had both Beauty and the Beast that day. Help me out with one of the hooks. Yeah. yeah. I know. Look at the teeth. That's the thing. Yeah. Keep that. I got him. Man. Yeah. Can I get your rod? Dude, that's a big one. Yeah. I mean, it's really not the time of year for him, but that's awesome, dude. It's a rooster. Yeah. Saw that coming in. We go up. Wow. Okay, that's powerful. On the stick yet. made a couple casts and hadn't had a hit, and I was gonna change lures. I was actually gonna go with a, kind of a local favorite uh, that is a very good lure. I had been casting the Sabeel Stick Shad, and I was gonna change, and Wes said, Dave, do not change from the Sabeel Stick Shad. Keep that on, it's the best lure down here, and boy, I'm glad I did. And the white one shows up, even though it's white, it shows up the best in the, in the white surf. So I, I leave my Sabeel Stick Shad on, and I just say, you know, I'm gonna launch a long cast. And we've been waiting for a fish to hit close, but that was periodic. And I just reach back and just launch a huge cast as far as I can cast out toward this rock. Right after the bait hits, I get a couple twitches on it and start reeling it really fast, and just a huge rooster comes up. His head is just monstrous, and, and 
Ah, oh, God, it was so exciting. Twitch a few more times and he ate the lure and I stuck him and he was on. It's a rooster. Yeah. Saw that coming in. I go up. Wow. Okay, that's powerful. Mm. On the stick shad. <clears throat> Told you. Ah. All right, where's he going? He's going a little bit right. right. Well, if, he, if he's getting near the rock, yeah. loosen up the drag. Let him go way out. If he's right in the middle, keep it nice and tight. Yeah, he's kind of just going straight out. All right. You know, one of the things that was a real challenge on this big rooster was he had two places out there to bust us off. And so um, you've really got to watch your line. Of course, we're using braid, which is real small. You're kind of looking into the sun. It's very difficult to see. So you've kind of got to watch the angle. He's going toward the rock. You run down the beach one way. If he goes the other way, you got to run down the beach the other way. And, and you're basically steering him between these two big piles of rock. It's much more difficult than when you're just fishing in uh, an open beach. He hasn't stopped running yet. Yeah. OK. Oh, he is so powerful. I mean, I've got a lot of drag on him. Look at him. So they just uh, say no to pressure. Just say no to pressure. <laughs> this is why you come down here, and this is why this is was the fulfillment for me of almost 20 years of trying to catch a rooster over 50 pounds. It, it's it can happen. You could do it your first time, uh, but for me, it it took 20 years nearly and. Um, worth the wait, though. Here comes a good wave, though. So he's going to try to duck under it, I'll bet. You just got to, if you can keep his head turned. Well, there you go. Oh, he's not a bad one, Wes. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I grabbed onto him first and grabbed him just inside the gills right here and tried to lift him up. I got him about here and it was like, Ugh. and he came down and then Dave runs down and goes, okay, get out of the way, I'm going to grab him. And grabs onto him and Dave goes, I grabbed the tail. And so between the two of us, we were, we were a good four, four or four and a half feet apart and he was grabbing the gills and I had the tail and we got some nice pictures of them and it was a massive fish. I couldn't get around the base of the tail. That's not a bad fish from the beach. <laughs> it's got to be 50 ish. It feels and it's heavier than a suitcase at the airport that definitely wouldn't make it through. 50 pounds. Come on, man. All right. Oh, there's another rooster right there. Okay. Good wave. Fishing is great. Fishing in the Baja is really great. But when you can take all that and then fish with somebody that is just a close friend, it's as good as it gets in life. Yeah. Yeah. Here he goes. <laughs> 